Just going back to the sleep labs that you mentioned, assuming that you get through your however long the waiting list is, um, how long would somebody have to spend going to a sleep lab for them to sort out the problem or diagnose it? They, they, they can be done in one night. Um, there's something called a split night study, which is essentially where you, wear, you, 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 you don't wear the device for half the night and then they put the device on for the second half the night. It would depend on how accurately uh, they can get the pressure, how, how much they need to set the, the, the air pressure on, on the device. That, you know, that can be, as I say, a single night. Uh, other labs may do two nights just to make sure that they, they, they've got the right uh, thing. But as I say, with an automatic device, um, th there would be no need to have the titration. The, auto the automatic device would do that on its own. Um, but again, these things are more likely to be done in private practice um, because they cost more than a standard CPAP and therefore in the NHS you're probably going to get you know, at least last year's model um, rather than the latest tech. Um, there is no, as I say, you can purchase these devices yourself uh, if you have the money, and, and, and you know, buy it's like you know, buying a car, uh, you, you can get something with all the you know bells and whistles on, um, but it's going to cost you more money. Um, the the, the, the same, the same. Sorry. What will it cost? What sort of figures are we talking about? Anything from a few hundreds to a few thousand pounds. Right. Um, dependent on, on, as I say, on you know the how quiet it is, how small it is, how light it is, whether it's automatic or by level or whatever. Uh, you know, these things can can cost a lot of money, but it, it, it's as I say, it, it, or as I say, you wait for the you wait for the NHS to uh, to you know the wheels to grind slowly on the NHS. Well, while we're on the subject of devices, um, someone who's called Potato Viewer on my list, and I really ought to know who Potato Viewer is by now, um, but they've asked, will any smartwatches or other devices that monitor sleep flag up any problems like sleep apnea? Not necessarily, um, because they're not that accurate in measuring the stages of sleep. Um, if they have a... Uh, a variable called sleep fragmentation or something related to the fragmented nature of sleep, this might give you an indication of a, a lower quality of sleep and that may indicate potentially sleep apnea. Um, but not, I'm not aware of any uh, uh, smart watch that actually specifically measures sound in this regard. Um, and so it would merely be a, you know, a possible, ex, you know, it, it would make you think, is there something wrong? And maybe sleep apnea could be the thing that's wrong. But as I say, a million times more accurate than that is your, your wife or your girlfriend nudging you in the ribs, telling you, you know, for God's sake, why do you stop breathing in the night? Um, you know, that, that, that's 100% yeah. accurate. Um, but uh, yeah, in my, in my case, in my, in my case, it's because she's holding the pillow over my head generally. But uh, yeah. exactly, exactly. So that that would give you that indication. So um, no, I, I say that you've either got these the devices we talked about earlier, which some of these respiratory services are using, um, or your your bed partner report. Those are the two most likely ways you are to find out.